organizing higher welcome welcome back if you're new here i provide organization and productivity tips tools and resources if that's something that you're into go ahead and subscribe that way you don't miss out on future videos so as you're watching this video you might already have a task manager that you use or maybe you don't have a task manager maybe you're using todoist which is the task manager i'm going to talk about today or you use something else but you've heard about todoist and you're curious about what it can do so i'm going to talk in this video about how i use todoist and you can use this to either learn a bit more about todoist or or to get inspiration for ways that you can set up your own Todoist setup. So when I first open Todoist, the first thing I see is my today view. I have it set up to land on this page by default and that's something that you can change in the settings. For obvious reasons, I wanna know what is due today. What do I actually have to accomplish? And that's always a really good way to start my day to just kind of get oriented. If I look here and I see two things and they're both pretty short, then I know I'm gonna have a pretty light day where I have the flexibility and freedom to decide what to work on next. But sometimes I'll come in and there are maybe five or six things and they're all somewhat intense or labor intense or maybe take a lot of mental focus. And then that lets me know what to kind of prepare for myself for that day. Taking both the data of what's on my to-do list that's due today and the data that I get from my calendar, which is what do I have scheduled, which is also a version of a to-do list. It's just a to-do list that has to be done at a specific time. Those two things together really help me to wrap my head around what kind of a day I'm going to have. Maybe I'm gonna be super busy back-to-back -back meetings and I'm gonna to have to struggle to squeeze in some of the tasks that I have to do that day or I've got a pretty open calendar and I can kind of take my time and be lackadaisical a bit about completing some of the tasks that I have to do. So it's really great for orienting myself right away. When I first started using Todoist, I made a mistake that I think a lot of people make, which is applying due dates to basically everything. I used priorities, I used due dates, and I was getting overwhelmed after a while with seeing, sometimes I would log in and there would be 10 or 15 things that I had to do on a day when I also had super back-to-back -back meetings and that was really stressful. I would notice though that the due dates would not be actual due dates and so sometimes I would just shift and I would move one thing to a new date. Oh, it's actually not due today. Let me move it to next week. But then what happened is I couldn't always tell the difference between an artificial due date that I had created or an actual due date that was real and couldn't be moved. So I stopped putting due dates on things unless it was the actual true due date. And that's really saved me a lot of stress, a lot of headache, and it makes the today view truly only focus on what's actually due that day. If I'm worried that I might forget about something, I'll either put a reminder on that task to just remind me that it's something that's on my list that I still need to do, or I'll catch it in my weekly review. I have another video where I talk about my weekly review process. So at least once a week, I'm looking at every single thing on my to-do list. So that's also a form of reminding myself. The upcoming view lets me look ahead weeks or months even to get a pulse again in tune with my calendar to see what my weeks and my months ahead look like. If I have a big project that's coming up I can be thoughtful about other tasks that I'm accepting. So when someone asks me if I can take on a new project, I can very quickly look and have a better sense of what it would mean to say yes versus saying no to that project. What impact would taking on that project have on other projects that I already have, particularly keeping in mind the due dates that I have down the road. So the upcoming view can be really useful for helping me see things bigger picture instead of just very day to day. My inbox is essentially the place that everything that I think of goes. Anything that pops into my mind about something that I need to do, someone walks into my office, I get a phone call, I get a quick email, I finish up a meeting and I need to do some type of follow up. All of that stuff lands in my inbox. I've talked before about the getting things done methodology and I do use that process when I'm going through my inbox. So the first step is to just dump that stuff in my inbox. If I have the time, I'll process my inbox, go through, decide if something is actionable, not actionable, etc. But a lot of times when I'm moving from one task to another, I don't have time to both have the thought and then think through the thought. So I just leave the thought in my inbox. I don't process it at all until I have the time to actually come back to it later. I actually technically have two inboxes. I have the inbox that's built into Todoist 
and then I have an inbox that's through uh, Amazon's device, the name of which I will not say so that I don't trigger mine, which is in my room right now. But it allows me to talk to that Amazon device and it will also add things to my to-do list and it'll show up in Todoist automatically. And then I just have to move it from that inbox through that Amazon device and move it into my actual Todoist inbox. So I can say something like, Alexa, add wash dishes to my to-do list. I've added wash dishes to your to-do list. And that is now on my to-do list and it's something that I don't have to remember to write down later. Anytime I have a thought, I have two of these Amazon devices in my home, whether I'm in my room or in the living room or the kitchen, I can say this thought out loud and don't have to worry that I'm gonna forget to do something. It's all captured in this inbox, which makes it really great to have one place to go to kind of sit down and sift through all of these ideas. And sometimes the ideas are silly or they're garbage or later I decide, no, I don't actually wanna do that. And I do have those experiences and those processes, but that's a separate process. When I have the thought, I don't stop and think, think through, well, how am I gonna do this? How can I problem solve? I don't start working on that action. I just acknowledge and recognize, oh wait, I need to wash the dishes. And then I add it to my to-do list and then I don't have to remember that again. I no longer have to keep thinking about that. It's no longer in the back of my mind, psychologically gnawing away. I've written it down, so to speak, and it's in a system that I trust that's going to keep that information until I'm ready to go in, engage with it, and decide what I wanna do moving forward. Adding things to the inbox is, is really simple and easy from the app as well. It's also really easy from the computer. It's cross-platform, which I love because I do have an Android device, I'm on a PC, and I have an iOS device. So any of those devices, and it, it's also web-based too, so any of those devices allows me to interact with Todoist, add things to my inbox, process my inbox. That really helps me to stay organized on top of things pretty much wherever I am. So I'll add things to my inbox sporadically throughout the day as things come to me, but also very intentionally during my weekly review process. I have another video where I talk about my weekly review process and I'll link that here. I've basically stopped trusting that I'm going to remember anything, so I just write it down. Now, sometimes I actually do remember stuff and the information in Todoist is basically just a backup. But in case I didn't remember, Todoist is my reminders. It's a better safe than sorry situation where I just put that stuff in Todoist and then later decide if I actually wanna do that thing if I don't wanna do that thing, if it has a due date or whatever the thought process is behind it. When I'm processing my inbox, I can take a couple of actions on the items using some keyboard shortcuts. So I can move things to projects, I can add labels and I can set up a filter. My projects are all listed along the left hand side of the screen and I'm able to see them pretty easily when I want to. When I first started using Todoist, I would look at things from the project view. I've actually stopped doing that and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. I now mostly look at things through the filter view. You can create projects based on whatever language you want, and then you can color code them with these little circles on the side. I personally don't go crazy with the color coding, just two colors, mostly uh, blue or purple, and that lets me know whether something is a work task or a personal task just by looking at the color. You can add in emojis, emoticons, but I don't do that either. I just think it's additional visual clutter. So I try to keep things pretty minimalist if I can. In line with GTD, I use action verbs to describe the outcome of my project instead of just the project. So instead of putting a project of search committee, I would put a project name of hire X person for position. That's more outcome based and it lets me know visually what it would look like for that project to be done. What do I hope to accomplish with that particular project? My filters right now are all based on context. So when I'm processing a task from my inbox, I will think to myself a couple of things about how long will this task take me to complete? Is this a next action, something that I need to do to move my project forward the very next thing I can do? Is this task something that requires a low amount of mental energy, a high amount of mental energy, maybe a medium amount of mental energy? And what kind of tools or resources do I need to accomplish this task? Do I need to be 
um, in my email? Do I need the internet? Is it just something that I need to do on a computer? Is it something that I need to be in my car to do? Is it an errand? So I'll have these contexts that allow me to essentially clarify specifically for that task, how much time is it gonna take me? What energy level do I need? And what tool or resource do I need to be able to accomplish that task? Using the filters allows me to then only focus on tasks on my to-do list that meet certain specifications that I can determine. For example, if I'm at home, and I only want to see things that I can do while I'm at home, I can create a filter that only shows me the things that I have labeled with that home label. This is really, really powerful. If you're ever in a situation where you have your to-do list and there are 70 things on there, that can be really overwhelming and stress inducing. So to chunk things down into, you know, what are the tasks I can do? I, I, it is, three o'clock on Friday and my brain is fried, what are some tasks that I could still do? Or I have 15 minutes in between meetings, what are some tasks that I can do? So to, instead of having to look through all 70 of those tasks, you can just look at this one filter and then pick from the maybe four or five tasks that you can accomplish and you can choose what you wanna do. So far, I'm trying this out for the first time. It's only been about a week or two that I've been using it. I used to look at a project to figure out what to do, but now I can kind of do both and I like that flexibility. So if I find myself with a particular project on my mind and I want to kind of uh, get clarity or feel a little bit better about that project, I can still go specifically to that project and look for tasks to do. But I also have the added bonus of that in between time where I'm thinking about, okay, well, this thing's done. What what should I do next? And sometimes I don't always have the answer. And it's nice to be able to have these buckets that I can basically look at. Um, oh, I'm feeling like pretty high energy. Let me look at some high energy stuff. Or uh, I'm sitting in front of my email. What are some emails that I can bang out really quick? So it's really cool so far to be able to have the flexibility to do both of those things. So I think I'll stick with it. If it's something that you've tried, let me know how you're using filters in the comments below. It's also really great if you have a to-do list that is in multiple sections for combining things into one action. For example, I earlier had to go to the bank. So I was able to look at my errands filter and find out what other things could I do while I was already going out to my car. I had to register some tires that I bought for my car. So while I was going to the bank, I took a picture of my car tire. So that way I have the information I need for the tire registration. I was already going to my car and I took a blanket out to the car so that I can have it with me for when my daughter rides in the morning. It's a little bit chillier these mornings and I don't have to go back to take a second or third or fourth trip to the car. I can quickly look at this list and tack off essentially multiple things with one action of walking to the car, which was something I was gonna do anyways. So I just really love being able to have this place where I can look and see how can I maximize my efficiency? I'm already walking to the car. What are some other things I could also get done at the same time? So that's how I'm using Todoist. For those of you who are already using Todoist, hopefully you found some really great ideas that you can apply to your own Todoist setup. Todoist is by far my favorite application that I use for productivity. I use it multiple times a day, as I'd already mentioned. I love that it's a to-do list that I will never lose. It's backed up daily on the cloud. It's cross-platform. I can have it on an application. It's on the web. It's everywhere. And I love being able to have instant access to always getting things off of my mind and onto my to-do list in a trusted system that I know I can look at later. Some of the things that I mentioned, like labels, reminders, filters, those are only available with the paid version of the app. There is a free version that's really powerful, but the filters in my mind, the reminders, the location-based reminders, so I get a reminder when I'm at a particular location or when I leave a particular location. And the labels, that is so crucial to my system that I do find it very worth the cost that I pay. And it's super cheap. If you're a student or an education professional, so if you're a teacher or administrator, you can get a really deep discount as well. I, I mean, it's ridiculously cheap. 
If you aren't sure yet that you want to commit to it, try it out. Try it out for a whole month. That gives you a lot of time to put it through the rigors, to test it out, to see if it fits, if it works with your system. And if you decide, I like it, but I don't need the labels and the filters, then you can just use the free version. Or if you do like it and you're a student or educator, then you can pay for it. If you use the link in the description below, you can actually get extra time to spend with the Todoist, which is awesome. So if you've used Todoist before and you found this helpful, let me know in the comments below some other ways that you're using Todoist. I hope that you hit that thumbs up button below and share this with a few people. That way they can learn about Todoist and task managers too. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.